Welcome to part nine in this series of creating a basic purchase order system using Blazor and C Sharp. Today, we're going to have a brief look at basic data validation. So far, we haven't added any data validation to our project. It's a fact of life, however, that unless we guard against invalid data being entered into our application, users will find a way of breaking it. There are two approaches we can take to data validation. We can use the inbuilt.net data annotations, or we can code our own validation before a record is saved, for example, or we could use a combination of the two. At this stage, data annotations is the simplest and should provide the protection we require. To use uh, data annotations, there are two basic steps we need to do. We need to edit the data model and we also need to edit the data entry form. In the data model itself, we need to add using system.componentmodel.data annotations to the top of the file. And then we need to add rules to the data columns. And finally, we need to add validation messages to the, to the data columns. In the form itself, the data entry form itself, we need to add data annotations validator to the edit form block. And then we need to put error message placeholders for each column being validated. So that's the plan. Let's have a look at the code. Before we make any changes to the code, we'll just run the project to see what would happen uh, without any data validation. If I select products and try adding one, I'll leave the description blank. I'll put in a price and I'll select a supplier and save it. And we get an error. Uh, down at the bottom here, an unhandled exception has occurred. Please see browse dev tools for details. Um, well, the user is not going to want to see that. Uh, all they want to do is to enter a product. But if we actually go to the Dev tools. We'll see under console here that the problem is that cannot insert the value null into a column product description. So we know what the problem is. Um, the user is not interested. So let's see what we can do about that. If I go to products model. Because we've used Alan Simpson's code generator, we've already got using system.componentmodel.data annotations at the top of the file. If we weren't using Alan's uh, code generator, we'd have to insert that. We'll see here as well that the product description is required, which is why we had the problem, uh, but it's also got a string length of 50 as a maximum. So let's Let's have a look next at the product page. I'm not going to make any other changes to this one for the moment. If I go to the product page and the data is entered using the Syncfusion grid and here's the edit form section. So if we simply just put in at the top of the edit form data annotations validator, that's the bare minimum that we need and we will get some protection against uh, date inc invalid data being entered. So let's try running it again. And if I select products, leave the description blank, put in a price, select a supplier and save. We don't get the error and description the border is in red and the description placeholder is in red. So that will give the user some kind of clue that there's a problem and probably they'll jump to the conclusion that they need to enter something in description. Uh, but we can be more specific than that. Uh, so let's have a look at how we can do that.
The way we can do that is by putting a error message placeholder next to the, well, not, it doesn't have to be next to, uh, we can, I'm going to put it next to the product description, but we could put it anywhere. Uh, and the code for that is this. It's validation message for, and then the at sign, couple of brackets, add edit product dot product description. The add edit product is the data model we're using for the uh, dialog and the product description is the field we're going to give the error message for. Notice that I've actually placed it underneath the text box. Right, let's run it. If I add another product. Now I get the message, the product description field is required. But notice that product description uh, is coming from our data model. Uh, luckily, it's fairly obvious what, what it means. Um, so the user is given a, a, you know, a good chance of knowing what's required here. Uh, but it could be, it could be uh, different if, for example, the error message was placed at the bottom of a long form. And just to, to show you what I mean by that, we can place, I'll just remove that and just put it at the bottom of the form uh, next to the next to the buttons for example you can place them anywhere these error messages so long as they're on the edit form And down here, you'll see that the product description field is required. Some people may prefer to have this next to the save button. If it's a long form, uh, the field has disappeared off the top of the screen, then that's very helpful. Um, actually, I just prefer to have it next to the for next to the field itself, but that's personal preference. But notice it's still using the uh, the field name from the the data model. Right, let's put that back where I want it, next to the description. And the next stage is that we can make the description better by putting an error message in the data model. And we do that by opening, closing brackets, and then putting in error message equals Etc. description. Now the error message is more specific and they know what the problem is. That's not the end of the story though. Um, we could have more than one type of error on a field. Um, so for example, string length, we've got a maximum of 50. Uh, we could change that and put in a minimum length as well. Minimum length of let's say five. And then an error message such as
run it again. I'm going to put a description in this time, but keep it short. And immediately, as I tab away from the field, it tells me, please enter a description between five and 50 characters. So in this particular case, the user is notified immediately of what the problem is. So the more we can add to the uh, error messages here, the better the system will be. There are a couple of other things we can do in the way of uh, putting, re putting uh, restrictions on what's entered. For example, on the supplier page, sorry, oh no, on the supplier model, we've got email here and we can put in fingers would work email address and that will validate the email address on the supplier so me we want to put a another error message in there saying so that's email address we can also put in a range uh, for numerical data. So for example, on tax, the tax rate, uh, we probably want to limit to between, this is entered as a percentage, so where zero is zero and one is 100%. So we probably want something like a range of between naught and 100. So if I enter, range and for range I think it's the lower limit comma upper limit and then comma error message Dear, my typing's got worse and worse. So here we are saying range has got to be, tax rate's got to be between 0 and 1, i.e. 0 and 100%. And then we need to put the, uh, on the tax page, for example, in the edit model, we'll need to put the validator in here. And we'd need to put the, te the, the, the error message in here. And we just replace that. with that. That was the wrong thing. That's not what I wanted in there. It was the data annotations. Must have just picked the wrong one. There we are. Again, just to demonstrate that, let's head to some data here. I forgot the closing bracket, but there's always a chance to go back and re 
correct spelling mistakes. Right, so there we are, we get the, the message there that the tax rates must be, to be between zero and one. So there's still quite a lot of work to do on here. Uh, I, for example, needed to would need to go here and put in error messages on all these fields where the user is going to see them. If they're not going to see it, like product is archive, it doesn't really matter. Um, I would caution against putting too many restrictions. So, for example, it might be tempting to put a, a range on product unit price. You might decide that it should only be between, say, zero and £10,000. Um, but as soon as you do that, you're going to find that users sometimes use negative prices for something or they've suddenly got a, a one-off contract where they need to enter uh, a, a unit price of £100,000, say. Um, so be very careful about placing restrictions that you think might be sensible, but which in the end might not be. Um, that's a trap to try and avoid. As always, I'll put in the description a link to uh, the Blazor Code web page that explains this. And from there, you should be able to link through to a page with the completed code with all the error messages and so on in it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, next video, we're going to be getting into the actual purchase order form itself, where life suddenly becomes an uh, awful lot more interesting. Uh, in the meantime, if you've got any comments, please leave, leave them below. Or if you've got any suggestions, uh, I would be more than welcome to, to receive them. Thank you very much.